Hello friends, happy Monday. Hope your day is going great so far. Um, yes, I wanna jump right into it because I feel like today's might be long. I will do my best for it not to be long. Yeah, let's see. So we are starting chapter 41 in the book Essential Truth to the Christian Faith by R.C. Sproul. And we are in the section of the Holy Spirit. Um, and I told you guys when we started the section that um, I feel like this is something that I really didn't know too much about. I feel like even growing up, um, yeah, the concept of the Holy Spirit wasn't explained very well to me. I thought it was just like a force, like this thing that like Jesus kind of left. And absolutely not. We see in scripture that this is a person, this is part of the Trinity, that um, it is a person because the Bible describes him as um, comforting. He can comfort us. You know, he leads us into truth. The fact that it says he, um, that he has a deity of um, God the Father, God the Son, that he is part of the Trinity, he is God. So um, going through this section has been really cool just to know more about who the Holy Spirit is. And I think it's been so amazing to do that. And um, yeah, Arshis Pearl has done a really cool job at just um, sectioning out, you know, talk about the deity, his personality, etc. So today we're going to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And obviously I don't believe in coincidences or any of that. But I was going through my reading this morning and I read a section that I was like, huh, what, what is this? Or I know I've read it before, but I feel like I have so many questions when it comes to the Holy Spirit that this section that we're reading today um, has to do with that. And that's why I'm like, wait, not a coincidence. So I'm going to read really quick what I read this morning. And then I'm going to start going to our chapter for today. Um, the chapter, we won't be able to finish it today for several reasons. Number one, it's a little long. And number two, I feel like there's a lot more digging in there that I want to do um, before finishing, concluding that the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So this morning I was reading Acts 19 and it talked about Paul and Ephesus. Okay. Paul was the one who wrote, um, no, he did not. Did he no, I don't even know. Anyway, so let me read and then we'll discuss it. It says, And it happened that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Um, and he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said into John's baptism. As in John was the messenger um, that came before Jesus and he was baptizing repentance. But Jesus came and said, no, now we have to baptize and now you guys are going to be Christians, believers of, believers in God, etc. So it's a different different type of baptism, okay? Um, the one that came before Jesus' baptism, all right? So that's what they were doing. Um, and Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him. That is Jesus. So I guess they didn't, hadn't heard of Jesus or that Jesus was the Messiah. They were just stuck on the message that John the Baptist had, like an old message, obviously, because Jesus had come already. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about 12 men in all. So I read that this morning um, and I'm like, okay, because I don't remember even growing up in the Baptist, I grew up in the Baptist faith, um, the Baptist church, that there had to be like a second conversion or something. And if you read that, it may seem like it's that way. But this is why it's so key to be able to read scripture deeply and see the meaning and see where they were and the context and um, the type of baptism that they were doing and why. And why it was it when Paul came, that's when the Holy Spirit came to them. Um, and this just brings up so many things that I don't even know about, that I've heard, but I haven't really dug into this baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, growing up, even just the concept of speaking in tongues and prophesying is something that we just didn't talk about as Baptists, but it's in scripture. So we have to have some kind of, you know, the Bible does speak about it. So we do have to have some kind of idea as to what the Bible says about these things, okay? So that's what I read this morning, and then I opened up the book to see, okay, what are we going to be discussing today in um, this live video that I do, and it says the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I'm like, okay, that again, that's not a coincidence. So let's jump into it, let's do, let's read maybe halfway through it. Again, all this is also kind of new to me because this is not something that I've done research on or even just, you know, talked a lot about. Um, so let's jump right into it. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. It says, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Okay. A person in our day 
who becomes a Christian will sooner or later be asked this question, all right? And I remember being asked this question several times. And I was like, uh, well, I already have the Holy Spirit because I'm a believer, um, which is true, but I need to know why, okay? And why these people are asking me these questions, okay? Um, the question is frequently posted by charismatic Christians who are enthusiastic about their experiences with the Holy Spirit. That is true. I have been asked that by the charismatic uh, kind of Pentecostal friends that I have or had, still have. We're still friends. <laughs> A doctrine that was once largely confined to Pentecostal and Assembly of God churches has now become a central importance to a vast number of believers. Okay, I agree to this. The neo-Pentecostal movement has reached into nearly every Christian denomination. This, this neo-Pentecostal uh, movement has to do with the Pentecostals, the uh, charismatic movement and all that. And saying that it's reached nearly every Christian denomination. Okay, I did not, I did not know that. A sense of excitement and spiritual renewal usually accompanies their, their fresh discovery of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in the church. All right, so they're excited. They're like, you know, honestly being let a lot about their, their emotions. Um, this is where like you go to a church and you see people that are kind of praying out loud and they're just like uh, speaking in tongues. They're, they're like, I I've witnessed it before. I haven't seen it in a long time. That's not what I'm used to. It's not what I grew up with. But again, we want to see what the word of God has to say about this, okay? Non-Pentecostalism has sought to define a doctrine of baptism of the Holy Spirit based on people's experiences, all right? The doctrine has been widely controversial. And the reason why is because I've heard of people, obviously, who are Pentecostal who've said, um, you know, they really didn't become Christians until they received the Holy Spirit and they were able to speak in tongues, that they're, you cannot be saved without, you know, speaking in tongues. Um, if it's not visibly that you have the Holy Spirit, then it's probably you're not saved so they even link it to salvation all right um so again it's based on people's experiences um okay usually but not always the charismatic christian considers the baptism of the holy spirit as a second work of grace distinct from and sub sub subsequent to generation and conversion so they're saying here that it's two conversions kind of, that you are regenerated, right? You become a Christian, you um, surrender your life to Christ, and then it's like a second work of grace that you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, and then now for sure you are saved. Um, so it's two different conversions, what they believe. And um, learn, looking at scripture, I can see, and even the passage that I read, I can see why they would go into that conclusion, all right? because it's misinterpreted and misread in so many ways. And I've told you guys is when we read scripture, we cannot base our whole belief on one little paragraph. Um, we have to, from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, pull out where it is that we see this subject of baptism of the Holy Spirit, pull it out, write it down, see it all together, see God, what are you trying to say as far as this? An overall picture of it, all right? Because a lot of times we, when we grab little verses or little paragraphs like these, we get tunnel vision and like, oh, that's how it is for everything. And then you see other sections, sections of the Bible where it's not so. So even going through um, this book, I remember telling you guys that when you see two things that seem to be they're in the same subject, but seem to be uh, contradictory to each other. You um, interpret the part that is contradictory um, in light of the other one, and the other one that is more that's more clear to what it's saying. So again, we are stepping back and we are reading the Bible as a whole, and we are just not focusing on one paragraph. Okay, I deviate. Continue. Um, again, uh huh. It is a work of the Holy Spirit that is available to all Christians. This is what I believe, but not appropriate by all appropriated by all sorry this is what the they believe the charismatics in the pentecostal church all right again that it is a work of the holy spirit right these two generations that we get the 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 initial one the regeneration and also the one where you're baptized with the holy spirit it is a work of the holy spirit that is available to all christians but not appropriated by all Charismatics are divided among themselves on the issue of whether speaking in tongues is necessary sign or manifestation of baptism. So again, even in that denomination, they also have, you know, um, uh, clear differences and they have, you know, things that they don't agree with, etc. 
um, Pentecostals point to the pattern in the book of Acts, where believers who obviously had a regenerating work of the Holy Spirit prior to Pentecost are filled by the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. So you see this in the book of Acts where you have even the disciples that, you know, were filled with the Holy Spirit because they were regenerated, because God did do that work or, or you know, when Jesus was here, he did that work in their hearts to open up their eyes and now they are believers and followers of Christ, you see them now being filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? So you do see this in the book, in the book of Acts. This biblical pattern, like I just said, that they are regenerated and then a period, a period of time happens and then they're baptized with the Holy Spirit. This biblical pattern, which includes a time gap between conversion and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is then seen as normal for all ages. This is something that we get in trouble a lot of times because we see it in scripture and we think, boom, that's exactly what needs to happen to me in that exact same order and that exact same pattern without looking at other, other examples in scripture and seeing what scripture has to say about that. We see that in so many things, you know, in so many ways, even when we... Um, we're guilty, and I've been guilty of even looking at the Old Testament and seeing how work, how God works in the Old Testament, in those cultures, in those different, you know, eras. Not that God changes, no, but He will work differently in those people as it is now. Jesus had not come and was the atoning sacrifice in the Old Testament, so we can't look at even how God worked in that in the same way that he's going to work in the New Testament, and so on and so forth. So there is such a bigger picture that we need to look at. And then when it comes to this, we see that, and we can't stand back and say, that is the norm, that is how it should be even nowadays, okay? Because you clearly see in other parts in the scripture where it's not that way, okay? So, um, again, they see this as normal, that they you, you have a regenerated heart, then a time period comes, and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes. Um, so you see that in Acts, but again, it shouldn't be the norm. And they see this as the norm, that that's how it should be for every believer, all right? Pentecostals are correct in seeing a distinction between the regeneration by the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This right here is new to me because I was taught up in the baptism world or the churches that I used to go to, etc., that this both happened instantaneously, okay? Like it wasn't two different things. It was one thing, okay? That's how I was taught. And it's it's me, it's my fault in the sense of that I don't, I, at that time, I wasn't reading my Bible. And I was just understanding and I was believing everything what people were, were telling me. And this is something that I highly recommend, or highly know. Is there anything more than highly like you have to do this where you have to read scripture? I even you even see it here where Paul is. I'm not sure what city he goes to where he goes and he preaches the gospel to um, Jews and they repent and they said, yes, it's true. But you know what they were doing? The Bible says they were going home and reading their scriptures to make sure that what Paul was telling them was true. So even the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, people were hearing them. Yes, the Holy Spirit was using them, but they were going home, reading their Bible, well, their scripture, opening up and saying and reading to make sure whatever Paul was telling them was true. So that's what we have to do. It doesn't matter who our pastor is, who we're following. We are the one. We have that onus to go home and open up the scripture and for us to do it. And I didn't do that. So that's why I was bought into anything that was told to me for so many years. So again, Pentecostals are correct in seeing this distinction, all right? Regeneration refers to the Holy Spirit giving new life to the believer, making alive one who was dead in sin. That is a work that the Holy Spirit does. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit refers to God empowering his people for ministry. So it is two things. And this is, and again, I will show you the Bible passages that we show here, that he shows here to see this, um, this fact. While the distinction between the regeneration and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is legit or legitimate, making a time gap between the two normative for all subsequent ages is invalid. So in order for us to say that there is a huge time period between both, we can't say that. All right. So it is two things that happen. The Holy Spirit does. But for us to say that it's normal that he does in, in a period of time, a big gap of time, that's not normal. That's invalid. OK, the normal pattern since the time of the apostles has been that Christians receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit along with the regeneration. That's usually how it's done. OK, it is not necessary for believers to seek specific second work of the spirit baptism following conversion. So it's not like, OK, I'm converted now. Now I have to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How long will it be? Lord, please do it now. No, that's that's not that's not the case. 
Every Christian is spirit filled to a greater or lesser degree, depending on the amount of yielding to the spirit. So I have had the Holy Spirit in me ever since I was regenerated. I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now to the degree that you see me spirit filled is how much am I yielding to it? There's days where I'm like, Holy Spirit, absolutely take over. Please live through me. And there's days where honestly, I'm so in my sin that I need to repent that there is no, you don't see the work of the Holy Spirit in me. So again, it has to be with the yielding of the Holy Spirit. We're going to stop right there <laughs> because we could be here the whole day. So we will finish this tomorrow. Um, again, this is all honestly a lot of times uh, for a lot of things that I'm saying here is new to me. That's why I read it this morning and I had to go even deeper before I went on to talk to you guys to say, hey, what's going on here? And I read some of the passages that he has stated and all that. So yeah, we will finish there. And tomorrow we will uh, finish this chapter of baptism with the Holy Spirit. If you have questions, you can shoot them my way. I will do my best to answer them as far as just reading scripture and what the scripture says. But if I don't know a lot, it's because all this is new to me too, guys. So um, yes, we're in this together. Um, love you guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.